dear students now we are going to discuss pushpull class b amplifier let's start with the definition of class b amplifier in a class b amplifier the transistor is biased such that the output current flows for only one half of the ac input signal that means the transistor used in this class b amplifier is switched on only for the half of the input signal so we can get the output like this that is half wave rectified signal so it produces some distortion in the output in order to get a full cycle output two identical transistors are used to conduct in alternate half cycles of the input correct so if you are going to use two transistors in the circuit then we can get the output for a full cycle that is 360 degree of ac input signal okay so there are two circuit configurations available based on the type of transistors used in this class b amplifier one is push pull class b amplifier in this configuration both the transistors are of same type that means both transistors can be either pnp or npn type So next one is complementary symmetry class B amplifier. In this one, two transistors form a complementary pair. Complementary means one is PNP, another one is NPN. Okay, so now we are going to discuss push-pull class B amplifier in this video lecture. Okay, now we are going to discuss push-pull class B amplifier in detail. In this amplifier, we are going to use two transistors of same type. it can be either npn or pnp type okay so this is the circuit diagram of push pull class b amplifier in this we are going to use two center tapped transformers and two identical transistors okay the first transformer is the input transformer it is also known as driver transformer the second one is output transformer okay so we are going to give the input signal to the primary winding of this input transformer due to this center tap this transformer will produce two signals with 180 degree out of phase with each other these two signals will drive the transistors do you all understand this concept this is the input side this center tap to transformer produces two signals with 180 degree out of phase okay so here whenever we are going to give ac input signal for the first positive half cycle this q1 becomes forward bias correct it is positive it is also positive means it is forward bias and it starts conducting but for this q2 here it is 180 degree out of phase this one is the negative one so it is in a off condition for the positive half cycle of the input signal here q1 starts conducting q2 is in off condition so here ib2 is equal to 0 only ib1 is present then it can produce the current ic1 at the collector side then we can get the output across this upper part of the primary winding of output transformer okay so for the negative half cycle this q2 becomes forward biased and it starts conducting the current here q1 is in the off state at that time we can get the negative half cycle as the output in this lower part of the primary transformer finally we can get 360 degree that is full cycle of the output signal across this rl this is the operation of class b amplifier using push pull circuit do you all understand this concept that's what given over here it consists of two center tapped transformer first one is input transformer that is driver transformer the input signal is given to the primary due to the center tap it produces two signals which are 180 degree out of phase with each other these two signals drive the transistors okay so here the second one is output transformer which is going to couple the ac output signal from the collector to the load okay operation is given here for positive off cycle of the input q1 starts conducting q2 is in off condition that means ib1 flows and ib2 is equal to 0 
Here the collector current at Q1 flows through upper part of the primary of the output transformer while the collector current at Q2 is equal to 0. The positive half cycle of the input is produced across the load. So that's what given as a diagrammatic representation over here. Here this I1 represents the operation of Q1. Here I2 represents the operation of Q2. So here for positive half cycles, the Q1 conducts. For the negative half cycle, Q2 conducts. Then we can get the full 360 degree output signal with respect to AC input signal. Okay. For negative half cycle of the input, Q2 starts conducting. Q1 is in off state. So here IB2 flows and IB1 is equal to 0. Okay. IC2 flows through the lower part of the primary of the output transformer. Thus, negative half cycle is produced across the load. Finally, full cycle is obtained across the load. Next, we are going to analyze the DC operation and AC operation of this push-pull class B amplifier. So, for this DC operation, the Q point. Q point means the operating point is adjusted on the x-axis. So, here we can have the graph like this. That is voltage versus current. So, here we can get the DC load line like this. So, here VCC comma 0. Okay. So, here the Q point at VCE is equal to VCC and then the current is equal to 0. There is no possibility for DC base bias voltage in this class B amplifier. So, here two currents by the transistors are in the same direction that is I1 as well as I2 for this DC operation. Then we can take that IDC that is the overall DC current is equal to the peak current divided by pi plus IM by pi. Okay, then we can get 2 into IM by pi. Okay, so this is the IDC value that is DC current in this push-pull amplifier. Then the total DC power is equal to VCC into IDC. VCC is the supply voltage. Okay. Since this Q point is present at this value, we can consider only this VCC for this output power. Okay. So, power at DC is equal to 2 into IM by pi into VCC. Consider this as the first equation. This is very important to find out the efficiency. Okay. So, next we are going to analyze the AC operation. So, for this AC output power, we have to consider the RMS value of the current as well as voltage. The output current and the output voltage peak values are given as IM and VM. So, M represents maximum value, okay. The root mean square values of current and voltage are given as VRMS is equal to VM by square root 2, IRMS is equal to IM by square root 2, okay. Then the output power is equal to VRMS into IRMS value VM by square root 2 into IM by square root 2. Then we can get VM into IM by 2. Okay. So this can also be written like this. As we all know that P is equal to what? Power is equal to V into I R V squared by R. Or we can write it is I squared into R. The same way we can represent this value as VM squared by 2 RL dash or IM squared RL dash by 2. Consider this as the second equation. So, here RL does is nothing but the ratio of Vm to Im. Okay, this represents the slope of the load line. Okay, slope of the load line of the AC operation. So, here this is the slope of the AC load line. This is the DC load line. This one is the AC load line. Okay. So, next efficiency. The efficiency of the class B amplifier can be obtained by using the formula that is the ratio of power at AC condition to the power at DC condition. So, here eta in terms of percentage is equal to output power in AC operation by output power in DC operation into 100. Then we have to substitute that first and second equations over here. So, here AC output power is equal to Vm into Im by 2 divided by 2 Im by pi Vcc. This is the DC output power. Then we can get the value as pi by 4 Vm by Vcc into 100. Okay. So this is the efficiency of the push-pull class B amplifier 
we are going to find out the maximum efficiency of this amplifier for maximum efficiency we have to consider vm is equal to vcc that is the maximum output voltage is equal to the supply voltage vcc then we have to substitute this condition in this formula then vm becomes vcc by vcc then we can get the output as 78.5 percentage so this is the efficiency of class b amplifier it is very very important so this maximum efficiency is greater than class a amplifier okay next one is power dissipation power dissipation means the difference between ac output power and dc output power so here we can get the dissipated power is equal to the difference between the dc power to the ac power then we can substitute the first and second equations over here then we can get the value as 2 im by pi vcc minus vm im by 2 as we all know that rl dash is equal to vm by im then we can substitute this value over here to get vm squared by 2 rl dash similarly im becomes vm by rl dash okay yes. so this is the power dissipation value so next we are going to find out the maximum power dissipation in this class b amplifier in order to get the maximum power dissipation we are going to differentiate this power dissipation with respect to the maximum voltage and equate that is equal to zero okay so that will give the condition for maximum power dissipation so here we are going to differentiate this term with respect to vm then this term becomes 2 vcc by pi into rl dash here this term becomes 2 into vm by 2 rl dash so here 2 to divided then we can get 2 vcc by by rl dash is equal to vm by rl dash then we can get the condition as vm is equal to 2 pi pi vcc then we can substitute that value over there to get the maximum power dissipation that is equal to 2 pi 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 squared vcc squared by rl dash this is the maximum power dissipation okay next advantages of class b amplifier this class b amplifier has higher efficiency than class a amplifier it has less power distortion the effects of ripple voltages will be reduced using center tap transformer reduced harmonic distortion as the dc currents flow in opposite direction through primary winding there is no possibility for dc saturation of the core okay so here center tap transformer is mainly used to reduce the harmonic distortion but at the same time it has some disadvantages two center tap transformers are used because of that the circuit is bulky and costlier it produces crossover distortion and also the poor frequency response okay finally the applications of class b amplifier it's widely used in high power applications such as audio power amplifiers and used in pa systems okay